So welcome all of you. This is a weekly current affairs discussion for geography, environment and science and technology. जो भी करंट अफेयर्स पिछले एक हफ्ते में हमने न्यूज में देखे हैं उनसे जो इम्पोर्टेंट इश्यूज हैं वो हम डिस्कस करने वाले हैं विल बी डिस्कसिंग द इम्पोर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ पास्ट वन वीक टुडे टेकिंग दिस सेशन इज मी सुडी सरदाना सो लेट्स बिगिन गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू लेट्स बिगिन एंड Quickly see what are what is the index for today. आज हम क्या कवर करने वाले हैं So the first topic is hybrid electric vehicles. EV stands for electric vehicles. The second is about five new Ramsar sites that have been added by India on the Ramsar list of uh, wetlands. The third one is GI tag or geographical indication tag has been given to White Onion. तो ये तीनों ही बहुत important news है इनमें से एक टॉपिक जो कि हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स का है द फर्स्ट टॉपिक अबाउट हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इट वाज इन न्यूज एंड इट विल बी टेकन एज अ क्वेश्चन फॉर सीज द मेंस टुडे तो सीज द मेंस हैज बीन लिंक्ड विद आवर वेबसाइट सीज द मेंस इज आवर डेली आंसर राइटिंग इनिशिएटिव सो इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो आइदर लाइव या आप इसका रिकॉर्डेड वर्जन देख रहे हैं वॉट यू कैन डू इज Click on the link in the description below after watching this video. It will take you to our website that is Raj I S Academy. वहाँ पर आपको ये question मिलेगा. You'll see this question, and you can answer this question, and our experts will give feedback to this question of yours, this answer of yours, entirely free of cost. So today we'll be covering hybrid electric vehicles, and hybrid electric vehicles से ही related question है. So what are the various types of electric vehicles? This is the first part. Highlight the steps taken by the government to promote electric vehicles in India and answer in 250 words. This is a highly expected question in UPSC and State Civil Services mains uh, this year. So uh, also, if you don't have confidence in answer writing, ke liye, if you are not confident about answer writing, what you can do is tomorrow, that is Thursday at 9 p.m. On our YouTube channel, Seize the Main का premiere होगा. Seize the Mains will be premiered, and there I'll be uh, taking the answer writing discussion. I'll be telling you how to answer this particular question. So let's begin with this session. What is the technology powering hybrid electric vehicles? So first of all, we need to understand what are the types of electric vehicles. That is our question. Since uh, hybrid electric vehicles or generally electric vehicles have been in news. so we'll see that what are the types of electric vehicles and sabki emissions mein ya efficiency mein kya fark hota hai so we'll start with the conventional vehicles jo hum use karte hain which run on petrol or diesel jo hamare conventional vehicles hote hain jo ki petrol ya diesel par kaam karte hain they, uh, this is where they are so what is the source of energy in a conventional vehicle that is petrol or diesel the fuel that you are adding okay fuel that you get from a uh, petrol pump or uh, places like that and what is the kind of emissions emissions are very high emissions are very high in quantity here when it comes to hybrid vehicles ab yahan ke baad hum log sab electric vehicles study karenge so electric vehicles they can be either battery electric electric vehicles battery electric vehicles ka kya matlab hai ki jo aapka vehicle hai whatever vehicle car scooter whatever you are having usme sirf ek battery hogi ek ya multiple electric batteries hongi and that electric battery will be charged hybrid electric vehicle se kya matlab hai in hybrid electric vehicle we have a fuel tank also uh, that means uh, you can fill petrol and diesel also in that a petrol or and diesel bhi bhar sakte hain and on the other hand there is a battery also so how does this battery get charged in a hybrid uh, vehicle we'll see that but hybrid se matlab hai ki dono type ke fuels usme use hote hain electric bhi aur conventional bhi so uh, hybrid electric vehicles can be of two types so on one hand you have the fuel tank on the other hand you have the battery so what you can do is jab ye battery khatam ho jaye to ya to ye fuel tank hi battery charge kar de when this battery dies out then this fuel tank can be used to charge this particular battery or what the other possibility is that this battery has a प्लग दैट कैन बी कनेक्टेड इन टू अ सॉकेट जिसको सॉकेट से कनेक्ट किया जा सके और इस बैटरी को चार्ज किया जा सके सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन लाइक द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दीज व्हीकल्स आई दर यू कैन हैव अ फुली बैटरी ऑपरेटेड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल दिस इज हाईली एफिशियंट देन इन द हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स आई दर यू हैव नॉर्मल हाइब्रिड विच गेट्स चार्ज बाई अ फ्यूल टैंक और वॉट यू कैन हैव इज 
प्लग इन हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल प्लग इन हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल मीन्स जो उस व्हीकल में बैटरी होगी वॉट एवर दैट व्हीकल हैज हैज द पोजेशन ऑफ अ बैटरी दैट विल बी चार्ज बाय द सॉकेट बाय सम एक्सटर्नल सोर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी द थर्ड टाइप इज फ्यूल सेल इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल सो बेसिकली उसमें इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एनर्जी जनरेट करने के लिए टू जनरेट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वॉट यू आर यूजिंग इज अ फ्यूल सेल फॉर एग्जाम्पल हाइड्रोजन फ्यूल सेल्स दे हैव बीन इन न्यूज रिसेंटली सो वॉट आर फॉर कन्वेंशनल वी सॉ दैट द एमिशन आर वेरी हाई लेट सी फॉर हाइब्रिड एंड प्लग इन हाइब्रिड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन हाइब्रिड एंड प्लग इन हाइब्रिड इज क्लियर सो फॉर हाइब्रिड वॉट इज द एक्सटर्नल फ्यूल only what you are using is uh, you have a battery and you have a fuel tank aapke paas ek battery hai aur aapke paas ek fuel tank and this battery is getting charged by the fuel tank only so there is more and more consumption of fuel so though the emissions are less than conventional but they are still high as you can see so this has highest conventional vehicles have highest emissions this still has high emissions hybrid electric vehicles now what if i charge this battery and this battery is bigger in size than this one if this battery is charged by a plug or uh, what we call it the plug in hybrid plug in hybrid mein agar aap uh, external source se charge karte hain then the emissions are very less as you can see here so emissions will become less in a plug in hybrid type of electric vehicle and what if जो आपका सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी है दैट इज जस्ट अ बैटरी एंड अ सॉकेट फुली रिचार्जेबल बैटरीज बैटरी ऑपरेटेड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स देर ह्योर वी हैव नो एमिशन सो द मोस्ट एफिशिएंट एंड द लीस्ट लीस्ट एमिटिंग लीस्ट यू नो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड और अदर पोल्यूटिंग गैसेज एमिटिंग वुड बी समथिंग विद ऑल इलेक्ट्रिक अब आप उसकी जो बैटरी है वेदर इट इज ऑपरेटेड बाई अ फ्यूल सेल और अ ट्रेडिशनल सोर्स दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन यू सो इज दिस पार्ट क्लियर and uh, then we'll move on to the next topic okay um are there any audio issues i'm getting uh i'm getting a message about audio issues all right so moving on to the next topic and this will cover the most ex- extensive part of our discussion today ye hamari discussion ka most extensive part hoga india has added five new wetlands to the ramsar sites now and after this after adding five new wetlands to the ramsar uh, ramsar sites now in india we have 54 Uh, ramsar wetlands a few years back we had just almost 30 ramsar wetlands now we have close to 54 or exactly 54 and with this india is the country with the highest number of ramsar wetlands in south asia so uh, this is a very big development uh, we'll see that what are the five wetlands which have been uh, which have been included and why have they been included but before that we need to understand what is a wetland so wetland as the name indicates it will have some water a place that has some water whether it is a lake lake ho sakti hai ek pond ho sakta hai swamps or marshes ho sakte hain basically dal dal uh, jane hum hindi mein bolte hain swamps or marshes can be there mangroves can be there estuaries can be there oxbow lakes can be there estuaries are basically when your river is about to enter the sea when river is about to enter the sea river has got fresh water in it and the sea here it has got salt water in it so estuaries ka jo pani hota hai bahut hi different and it has a lot of nutrients in it so jo bhi around uh, you know adjoining sea jo bhi water bodies hoti hai ya jo bhi wet, uh, wetlands hote hain whatever wetlands are there adjoining the sea they are very nutrient rich and they have a kind of biodiversity which is not found at other places so these are basically the types of wetlands wetlands can be man made also it is not just that if you have to include in the list of ramsar wetlands you have to include natural wetlands only it is not compulsory you can have man made wetlands also so a wetland is a distinct in- ecosystem that is flooded by water either permanently or seasonally ya to usme kabhi kabhi pani aata ho ya hamesha hi pani rehta ho both of the cases we can consider them as a wetlands so now what is the ramsar convention ramsar convention ya ramsar wetlands hai kya 
सी इट वॉज रियलाइज अराउंड इन 1971 सेवेंटी वन ऑन अ ग्लोबल लेवल ये जो वेटलैंड है दीज वॉटर बॉडीज विच हैव वॉटर समटाइम्स एंड अदर टाइम्स दे डू नॉट दे माइट नॉट हैव लेक्स हो गई पॉन्स हो गए लेक्स पॉन्स एस्टुआरीज मैन ग्रूव दीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द सर्वाइवल ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स और फॉर द प्लानट अर्थ इन जनरल दे कैन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव अ लेक नियर योर हाउस और अ पॉन्ड नियर योर हाउस वॉट पर्पज डज इट सर्व उस पॉन्ड या लेक का क्या पर्पज है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट कुड बी हैविंग अ लॉट ऑफ बर्ड्स और यू नो एक्वेटिक एनिमल्स फिशेज हो सकती हैं देर कुड बी मेनी फिशेज विच कैन नॉट बी सीन इन अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड तो बायोडाइवर्सिटी इज वन इम्पॉर्टेंस सेकेंड इम्पॉर्टेंस इज दैट इट कुड बी सर्विंग एज अ सोर्स फॉर फ्रेश वॉटर सो फ्रेश वॉटर इको फ्रेश वॉटर के लिए आस पास की जो पॉपुलेशन है उनको सर्व कर सकता है एंड फॉर द एनिमल्स एंड अदर बर्ड्स ऑल्सो नॉट जस्ट फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स फॉर अदर्स ऑल्सो थर्ड इट कुड बी एक्टिंग एज एंटाई पोल्यूटेंट फिल्ट्रेशन का काम कर सकता है वो वेटलैंड पोल्यूशन कम कर सकता है इट कैन रेगुलेट टेम्परेचर्स अराउंड इन योर एरिया सो इट वॉज रेकग्नाइज दैट नॉट जस्ट ओशियंस नॉट जस्ट यू नो इको सिस्टम्स ऑन लैंड और एयर और इन द डीप सी वेटलैंड आर ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट वेटलैंड विच आर or you know transitional zone between land and aquatic ecosystems they are in fact the most uh, most important types of ecosystems on earth and to recognize their importance inki importance ko samajhne ke baad to after when their importance was recognized it was decided that uh, unesco will come out with a list of wetlands from from time to time and jo bhi wetlands is list mein honge all efforts will be made on the national and international level to protect these wetlands so india has like 54 uh, such places now so it's a very good news and now these places can be protected and they can be preserved in their pristine nature so इधर जो uh, कुछ एंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज हैं द एंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज है दे कैन बी प्रोटेक्टेड और दे कैन बी यू नो प्रोटेक्टेड टू सर्व मैन काइंड और जनरल और जनरल लाइफ इन जनरल so the ramsar convention ramsar basically it is a place in iran iran makes city hai there there this conference was held ramsar conference and uh, at that time the importance of wetlands was realized so it is named after the city in iran ramsar city in iran bordering the caspian sea so uh, it is named after that city so ramsar convention is an intergovernmental environmental treaty that was established by unesco On February second, nineteen seventy one, and February second को ही हम World Wetlands Day भी मनाते हैं. We celebrate World Wetlands Day on second of February every year. So it provides international cooperation and national action regarding conservation of wetlands and sustainable use of their resources. So that's about it. Then we have this Montreux record. It is related to. Ramsar Convention only. It is related to Ramsar wetlands only. Montreux record is basically, for example, if you have a list of Ramsar sites, if there are hundred Ramsar sites all over the world, let's take an example. So there must be some sites. कुछ sites ऐसी होंगी जिनको बहुत early protection की requirement है. For example, there must be some sites which have been यू नो जो अपनी प्रस्टीन नेचर से बहुत दूर हट चुकी हैं जो बहुत ज्यादा डिस्ट्रॉय हो चुकी हैं सम साइट्स विच हैव बीन डिस्ट्रॉयड वेरी यू नो वेरी एब्रप्टली बहुत ही बुरे तरीके से डिस्ट्रॉय हो चुकी हैं आई द ड्यू टू मैन मेड एक्टिविटीज और नेचुरल एक्टिविटीज सो टू मेक देम टू मेक देयर प्रोटेक्शन टू कीप देयर प्रोटेक्शन ऑन अ प्रायोरिटी बेसिस बेसिकली एक रेड लिस्ट का काम करता है मॉन्ट्रियक्स रिकॉर्ड फॉर द लिस्ट ऑफ रामसर रामसर साइट सो वेन एवर यू सी मॉन्ट्रियक्स रिकॉर्ड इट इज रिलेटेड विद वेटलैंड so how it is done that uh, they take the consent of the national party for example if india wants something some wetland uh, if we want from india to be included on the montrex uh, montrex list so consent will be taken from india and all the parties of ramsar convention and then it will be put on the list and if after some time enough conservation efforts have been done agar us jagah ko protect kar liya jata hai to montrex list se us cheez us jagah ko hata bhi diya jata hai for example we had chilka lake in odisha that was on this record but uh, later on it was removed as of now we have kiyolaadio national park of rajasthan and loktak lake in manipur very important from prelims point of view so these are the only two wetlands from india out of 54 we have only two wetlands which are on the montrex record which require urgent and immediate protection 
So, uh, what are the Ramsar wetlands in India now? We have a total of uh, 54 Ramsar wetlands in India, as I just told you. And uh, currently, what were the first two Ramsar wetlands that were to be designated? 1981 May. Chilka Lake and Keoladio National Park. These were the first two Ramsar sites. Now we have uh, like additions going on every six months or every year. But the first two need to be remembered. The first two were Chilka Lake in Odisha and Keoladio National Park in Rajasthan. So the new sites, this is the list of new sites. We'll be covering each of them in detail. So stay tuned. The first one is Three are from Tamil Nadu. Three of the wetlands which have been added to the Ramsar list are from Tamil Nadu. The first one is Karikali Bird Sanctuary. The second one is Palli Karanai Marsh Reserve Forest. The third one is Pichavaram uh, Mangrove Forest. The fourth one is in Mizoram that is Pala Wetland. And the fifth one is in Shivpuri, Madhya Pradesh. It is called the Shakya Sagar Lake in Madhya Pradesh. So let's uh, start by uh, uh, studying about in the about these wetlands in detail. But first thing that I would like to tell you is that whenever you are preparing for your exam, आप अपने किसी भी exam के लिए prepare कर रहे हैं, don't go for notes that have been provided by the newspaper or some you know websites in general. If you are covering, if you are covering these current affairs, especially with regards to uh, Ramsar wetland sites, so this is Ramsar sites information service. This is a website. Directly go there, find out the wetlands from India and here you will find the most detailed description and that will be relevant from your exam point of view also. Sometimes what UPSC does is they go to such authentic websites, they copy paste uh, the statements and put them as questions in your prelims examination. So don't follow any other sources, just go to this website for any, for any of the 54 sites that you are about to follow or the next, uh, or the next solution is go to the website of that particular state, which is the tourism department hai, uh, or the environment department of that state, that must be covering these particular sites in detail. So starting with the first one that is in Tamil Nadu, Karikali Bird Sanctuary. As you can see in the picture here, there are a lot of birds. So that's why this is known as a bird sanctuary. Basically, this uh, wetland in Tamil Nadu, mein, it is called the Vedan Thangal Bird Sanctuary. इसके साथ स्टडी किया जाता है। Basically, at one place, at uh, this particular bird sanctuary, what uh, birds do is they that is the nesting site. Vedan Thagal Bird Sanctuary is the nesting site, and this is the foraging site for birds. So it has two tanks, and around 1988, these tanks were joined. These two water bodies were joined. Not these, uh, but to make a Karikali bird sanctuary, though type ki separate water bodies thi, they were joined, these two tanks were joined and they were established as a bird sanctuary. So why is it important? Because bohat sari migratory birds aati hai. Several migratory birds such as Northern Pintail, Gargani, common uh, sandpiper were recorded from this site. So that is why it is important because from the biodiversity point of view, it is essential to protect it. So this one was the first site. The second one is again from Tamil Nadu. It is the Palli Karanai Marsh Reserve Forest. As you can see in the picture, if you can see picture, mein dekh sakte, ek city established hai iske, uh, shore par, shore line par, or uh, near this uh, particular wetland, a city has been established and this is the city of Chennai. So if a wetland has been located near such a big city, then Obviously, there would be issues of pollution, overpopulation and stress for fresh water on this particular wetland. So, protecting this wetland was in news for the past like many years for a decade or more. But now it has been added on the Ramsar list. So, what you have to remember here is that it is a natural site. Again, from prelims point of view, you must note down that which one is a natural site and which one is a man-made site. So, Pallikaranai wetland is a fresh water marsh in the city of Chennai and it has many rare and endangered and threatened species that's why protection is uh, very important. What are the threats that it, uh, this particular wetland has? Obviously city ke paas hai, so indiscriminate dumping of toxic solid waste along the road, discharge of sewage and construction of buildings, railway stations, raid, uh, roads etc. So, with this, you know, the water evaporation rate has risen and the wetland ka area hai, that has also come down, that has also shrinken, shrunken with time. So, now, since this is on the Ramsar, uh, uh, Ramsar, site, uh, Ramsar list, 
now protection efforts will be very you know at, uh, will will happen at a very quick pace at a very fast pace and now this wetland can be protected the third one from tamil nadu is the pichavaram uh, mangrove forest we will zoom this picture see these are basically mangrove for a forest and these are one of the biggest mangrove forest of india in fact the second biggest mangrove forest after sundarbans wo inhe bola jata hai pichavaram mangrove forest ko as you can see there are forest on the two ends on the left and right there are forest and from this water body a lot of boats pass so you can see this on google images also a lot of images a lot of beautiful images will come out so protecting this is very important because ye do uh, water bodies se bana hua hai located between the vellar estuary in the north and colleron estuary in the south it is the that are permanently rooted in a few feet of water so as i told you that uh, second largest mangroves in india and one of the largest in asia it is separated from bay of bengal by a sandbar so bahut hi patle sandbar se bay of bengal se separated hai it is you can see it on the boundary on the coastal boundary of india so what are the types of mangroves that are found here first of all uh, very important and very commonly found in india is rhizophora the second one is avicennia and there are a lot of species which are found here mangrove forest already wo ek aisa ecosystem hai mangroves is such a kind of ecosystem that whatever species or types of trees that you find in mangrove forest you will not be able to find anywhere else or you will not be able to find them on proper land or in proper water so it is a transitional ecosystem between salt water and proper land so that's why remembering these species sometimes questions have been asked ki ye jo uh, species hai where can you find them so are these species of mangroves mangrove forest or natural forest or whatever so mangroves also attract migrant and local birds including snipes cormorants egrets storks herons spoonbills and pelicans this point will be of more importance to you the species found in mangrove forest these are all migratory species that land up here the next one the fourth one is the pala wetland of mizoram pala wetland is basically mizoram ka sabse bada natural wetland hai it is the biggest natural wetland of mizoram and look here how beautiful it is so it has a very deep lake 16 meter deep lake hai what you can see here so it has a very deep lake and it serves as a source of fresh water to the local inhabitants ek local community hai the the mara community so they regard it of like sacred mante hai is jagah ko they regard ancient times se it is uh, since ancient times it has been considered sacred so there is this mara community that uh, that um, hails it and as you can see again this boat is passing through the pala wetland so it is very much navigable so um important points here largest natural wetland in the state of mizoram has a relatively deep lake which is over 16 meters deep on an, on an average there are low lying marshy areas with uh, which wetland provides excellent habitat for many herbivore species the species found in this uh, area are very important and these species are important from your prelims point of view also separately in species ko apne cover karna hai exam ke liye the first one is the sambar deer the second is wild pig and the third is barking deer fourth is hulog gibbon the uh, this particular uh, 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 a particular species is also found here so uh, the fourth the fifth thing that you have to remember is local mara people there is this community called uh, of mara people and has a deep connection with their history so again as i told you it is a major source of fresh water and fish for the villages at its fringe and also the major source of irrigation water for wet rice cultivation so not just for drinking but for agriculture horticulture and other forms of agriculture this particular wetland is very important not just for scenic beauty but also it has got many applications the last one that we'll be studying today is the sakya sagar lake shivpuri so now shivpuri is a very beautiful place somewhere in madhya pradesh it has got three lakes and sakya sagar is one of them so Shakya Sagar is important for the crocodiles the magar crocodiles or the magarmach jise hum hindi mein bolte hain and these crocodiles they attract a lot of tourists here so now this um, and this is a human made reservoir again another point to note 
that this is a man made reservoir on the outskirts of Shivpuri. So, that's all you have to remember from these wetlands. Uh, getting into too much detail is not important, just natural, wet, um, natural man made would be enough. And the places, and if you are sitting for any prelims recently, whether it's for state civil services or UPSC next year. The questions are highly likely that you will be given a list of uh, places or wetlands and you will be asked to mark the Ramsar wetlands. What are the Ramsar sites out of the following or what are the re recent Ramsar sites? So, a lot of Ramsar sites have been added on the list in the past 3 years uh, on average. So, keep a note of them. The next and the last topic for today is there uh, is a geographical indication tag that has been given to white onion. So, what is white onion and what is a geographical indication tag? Let us see. So, um, geographical indication tag for white onion of Alibag. Alibag is a place where white onion ko, safed piaz ko GI tag mil gaya hai. So, how does a GI tag look like? If you have bought a pashmina shawl or any other thing that has got a GI tag on it, you will find this kind of picture. This is the stamp that the government uses ministry of consumer uh, ministry of commerce and industry gives the gi tags so why commerce and industry because it is related uh, with the industrial development of india agar zada commodities ko gi tag milta hai that means if more and more commodities get gi tag that means the quality of that com com uh, commodity has been checked and assured by the government of india and it that particular uh, thing is coming from a particular place only. For example, we have blue pottery of Jaipur, uh, Jaipur. We have so many GI tags from Rajasthan. We have the Pashmina shawls. We have the Darjeeling tea. So, if a tea has GI tag on it and they call it Darjeeling tea. So, for sure that tea was made in Darjeeling and it will serve you the quality of Darjeeling tea. So, that is the importance of GI tag. The stamp is this. And how does it work? So basically, a sign hota hai. This is a sign that uh, is put on products which have a specific origin, which is one place and not be And after these products get, get GI tag, any other product cannot use this name. It's like an intellectual property right. Ki tarah kaam karta hai. So, any other product can use the name of that product. That would be unlawful. So, getting a GI tag basically increases these products market value and market values are bad jati for example a kind of basmati rice so if that rice has basmati rice has got gi tag so when you go to the shop jab aap shop pe jate if you ask for basmati rice it is more expensive than other kinds of rice now basmati also has a lot of types some gi tags are given to punjab some uh, gi tags are given to andhra pradesh madhya pradesh so when you go to the shopkeeper you can be sure short of the quality of that particular product. So, a lot of products get GI tag and other products cannot use this tag or this name. So, items which are covered under this are agricultural products. For example, could be crops hai. Crops can be covered or other agricultural products can be covered. Food stuffs. There are, uh, you know, this Bengali rasgulla and rasgulla from Odisha both have these separate GI tags. So, anything that is made, a koi agar particular dish banai jati hai, any food stuff that can also get a GI tag. Wine and spirit drinks. I think Italian wine has got GI tag in India. The uh, next one is handicrafts, blue pot, whatever, blue pottery from Jaipur. I gave you an example. And um, Fulkari from Punjab, that is another example that also has a GI tag and industrial products. Industrial products also, the final final products of any industry, they can also get GI tags. So, uh, there is a list on the uh, website of Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So, you can go there and see for yourself ki aapki state se GI tag kisko mila hai. Whenever you sit for interview, it is highly likely that you will definitely be asked about GI tags from your state or your particular area. So, just keep that in mind. GI tags of your state should be known to you. Secondly, before sitting for prelims, note down the GI tags which have been given to commodities in the past 2 to 5 years. In the past 5 years, which have GI tag mila hai. They are very important from prelims point of view. And if you are sitting for state civil services exam, then again, all the GI tags that have been awarded to commodities of your state. Cover that in detail. So, now we will study about this white onion. Basically, it gets, uh, 
it will benefit the farmers now since it will uh, it has got gi tag it will get benefit the farmers now farmers can sell it on the basis of that gi tag and they can raise its prices and get a lot of revenue out of it because now after getting gi tag it has been ensured ki aisi quality ka onion aapko nahi milega white onion is a separate kind of commodity in itself so um, there is a place in maharashtra called alibag and it is a very popular tourist spot so that is where this uh, alibag onion or white onion is grown what are its characteristics iske khas baat kya hai so it has a sweet taste otherwise onions have bitter taste you know they um, they make your eyes teary but this particular onion has a sweet taste and it has got many medicinal properties also so locally also local log isko kafi sare diseases treat karne mein use karte hain otherwise also it's used in a lot of medicines so it has um, it is being cultivated traditionally traditional way of life jo alibag ke logon ka hai uh, uska ye bahut important part hai so it gi tag should have a cultural significance also uh, so that is one of the parameters for deciding gi tags for giving gi tags so this has a traditional a uh, way of cultivation it has been in, in place for the very long time so that's why this particular onion has got gi tag now now these were the most three important uh, important topics for today make sure that you go back uh, click on the link on the website or in the description below go back and answer this question the first part of the question regarding seize the mains has already been taken this question what are the various types of electric vehicles this already has been taught to you highlight the steps taken by the government to promote electric vehicles in india so these articles about the steps that government has been taking or has taken gst rate kam kar diya gaya hai electric vehicles par or there was this fame policy of government of india read about fame policy and how government of india in the past 10 to 20 years has supported companies Of which which manufacture electric vehicles, electric vehicles manufacturing companies को कैसे government ने support किया है ताकि ज़्यादा ज़्यादा electric vehicles produce हो सकें. We have this target to produce like twenty million or uh, around that electric vehicles around twenty thirty. 2030 तक हमारा एक target है and to achieve that we need to have a lot of demand and supply. So uh, that is the policy of the government. Read it, answer this question, put it on the website, and get it evaluated entirely free of cost.